and do a final finery demonstration out on the field. We, we have an officer who's going to kind of explain the mountain howitzer. Um, we go through a process. The U.S. Model 1835 mountain howitzer. There was 11 of these sent into Florida. The um, the Army uh, felt the fact with the small design, um, the fact that it could be broken down and carried by three pack mules, that it would be very maneuverable here in the Florida swamps. But they've kind of found because of the heavy weight, it was actually kind of hard to get it loaded on the pack mules. And then also the... Um, when pulled on its carriage, uh, like it's mounted right now, it actually had a tendency to be very, because of the narrow axle width, it had a tendency to be very unstable. The, um, so at, near the end of the war, they did redesign this carriage and come out with what they call the prairie carriage. There's two different main types of projectiles we fire out of this. One would be the exploding case shot, which was a hollowed out cannonball that had an explosive charge in it and it had an external time fuse. That would just, you could kind of trim the fuse right before you were firing it and could somewhat control the range with that uh, that case shot would explode or the cannonball would explode. The uh, the primary thing, especially against an opponent like the Seminoles um, that don't mass in tight groupings and such, uh, would be the canister round, which was a tin can uh, that was full of musket balls. It would break up and essentially make this thing into a shotgun, sending a spray of, uh, of musket balls down range. The, um, the uniforms that we're wearing are actually the uh, winter, the U.S. Model 1832 winter fatigue uniforms of the artillerymen. At the outbreak of the war, uh, the Second Civil Indian War, there was uh, most of the infantry were out west uh, dealing with the, the expanding territories out there. Uh, they actually pulled artillerymen um, out of the coastal forts and brought them down into Florida. Now, artillerymen of the time period were trained to both to uh, act as infantry of the infantry, infantry tactics, but also in the using of artillery pieces. Um, I'm, we're actually just going to go do, go through a brief um, kind of showing you some of the different steps that it takes to uh, to load this weapon. Serve the piece. Worm. John's going to go ahead and take the spiral screw there that actually sends that up through the bore. Worm. He's going to extend, put that down the bore, twist it the appropriate direction, that actually is going to remove any remnants of anything that might be left in the bore from any previous shots or anything else that might have ended up in the bore. Sponge. We're going to take the wet sponge. That's actually lightly dampened. It'll uh, lightly clean the bore, but also, and more importantly, extinguish any embers that might be in the bore from any previous shots. Advance the round. Our cannoneer here near, the back, near our limber box would actually take a round out of the box have our cannoneer check that to make sure he's got to grab the appropriate type of ammunition that for, uh, for what we're doing here. And hands that off to our number two man. Charge cartridge. He did take what did stick the cartridge into the bore. On the opposite end of the sponge is the rammer. And he's going to ram that to the back of the bore. Ram. Seats the cartridge to the back of the bore. The uh, cartridges actually came pre-prepared with the projectile or canister on the front with a uh, with the uh, um, flannel powder bag a, a, attached to the rear of it that would have our explosive gunpowder. Um, there's a hole in the back of the bore. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and prick. Um, this uh, came here would go ahead and uh, pull out a small wire bit prick, and he would actually stick that through the hole, and that would actually pierce the powder bag, exposing the gunpowder. Uh, the next thing would be go ahead and put in our primer. This is just our test primer that we're our practice primer we're going to be going and inserting in here at the, the, the gun at the moment. The string is called a lanyard. The uh, we're actually using a uh, ready fire. Now this was the real round. We are that the primer that would be inserted into the hull would have actually sent off a um, put a, a um, shot a little bit of fire down through the vent. Communicated that to our uh, our main uh, propellant powder charge on the back of the canister. We would have sent our projectile or projectiles downrange.
we're now going to go ahead and um, load this, load and fire the uh, the uh, piece up with a blank round. Um, for all of you with sensitive hearing, uh, you may want to cover your ears or hearing aids. You may want to go ahead and turn those down when we uh, when we're when we're ready to fire those. And especially you guys over here, it's going to be pretty loud for y'all. So. Again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these are our volunteers, and their paycheck is a great round of applause. What do you think? Give them a hoot and holler and a round of applause. <laughs> they love questions. If you'd like to come on and do uh, the cannon, take some pictures, ask some questions. Matt loves questions.